to answer the, uh, the question one should pose at the very beginning of any lecture series. So we proved something. We proved no gaps delocalization. The question is why we care. Uh, besides the fact, uh, so we, have, we know that the eigenvectors are delocalized, so what? And we are going to discuss a few applications uh, to random graphs, more precisely to order Schrenny GNP random graphs. But before this, let me again flash this uh, transparency. We are considering uh, no gaps delocalization, which means that any unit eigenvector, for any unit eigenvector and for any set of coordinates of cardinality epsilon n, the mass falling on these coordinates is a polynomial in epsilon. And this event occurs with high probability. We are going to use it for random graphs, so I'm going to cheat. I'll, uh, I proved uh, the theorem under the bounded density assumption, and I'm going to use it without bounded density assumption. I'm going to use a more general result, which I didn't prove, but uh, it can be proved along this, uh, uh, using uh, the same ideas, although the proof is uh, some five times longer. And here we have uh, the same result for any eigenvector and for any matrix of, uh, the, of a reasonable norm uh, without almost any assumptions on the entries. However, even these two sentences that uh, V is an eigenvector and the matrix has a rather small norm can be significant rel relaxed. That's a beauty of geometric approach that you, you can uh, uh, basically uh, twist everything if you are ready to pay a small price. Uh, let's see how we approach uh, this, uh, this theorem we reduced to the statement of uh, this about the smallest singular values, and we did it in the following way. We took the matrix A minus lambda, where lambda is an uh, eigenvector, V is, or X, let's say, is zero, and then we assume that the norm of X i is small. And then we wrote that the norm of A minus lambda x i complement is uh, equals norm A minus lambda x i, which is less or equal than this is at most twice norm A. Times this small. And since we are uh, proving the, uh, we are estimating the probability of the inequality instead of equality, I don't have to require that a minus lambda x is precisely zero. I can instead, I can replace it by saying that the norm of this difference is small. Uh, appropriately small, sorry. Appropriately small so that it would not affect what we have here. And so our delocalization theorem is actually a result not about eigenvectors, but about approximate eigenvectors. Second, in 
In the previous statement, we have this term that norm A can, uh, showing that the norm of A should not be too large. And sometimes it's not convenient. For example, if I take a matrix with ID entries whose uh, expectation is non zero, then the typical norm will be about n, not about square root of n. And it would not fall under these conditions. But this is also very, very easy to, uh, to manage if, uh, say, instead of A, I consider the matrix A plus B, where the rank of B is 1 and the norm of B is less or equal, than, say, than n to the 10th. Then I can retell the same story. I have an eigenvector and I write the norm of A. And uh, I have an eigenvector of A plus B. I am writing that the norm of a plus b minus lambda x is small. And then the norm of a minus lambda x i complement uh, plus, uh, plus b x is less or equal than this small plus the norm of a minus lambda x i. And this is small as well. OK. So instead of. Uh, a minus lambda x i complement, we have this additional term b times x. But I assume that b has a norm 1, so I can write this b times x as some number theta times b, where b is a fixed vector in the sphere. And Theta is a random parameter, which I don't know anything about besides that the absolute value of theta is less or equal than n to the 10th. So instead of proving that with high probability, this norm cannot be small, I'll prove that with high probability, this norm uh, will not be small for any theta. To do it, I have to take the union bound over theta. The number of theta is infinite, but we know what to do. We discretize theta. We use epsilon net argument and pay the price, which is the entropy cost. So what is the entropy cost here? I have to discretize theta, and theta is a real number. So I have, a one I have to discretize the interval negative n to the 10th, n to the 10th. And I discretize it with the steps 1 over n, uh, which will be definitely enough because the norms are over the order square root of n. I get the entropy cost n to the 11th. And I'll have to multiply this n to the 11th by the failure probability, which is a constant to the power epsilon n. If epsilon is not too small, this n to the 11th will be easily absorbed. So we can afford matrices of rank 1 as, uh, per perturbations of rank 1 as well. And of course, rank 1 plays no specific role here. I, have, I can have rank 10 or whatever. So why did I tell this story uh, uh, besides generalization for the sake of generalization? Let's consider erdos rheny graphs.
So I have a graph G where V is an M element set and for any V W in V, I connect them by an edge with probability P independently for each pair and I don't allow self loops. So this is what is called an Erdős Rényi or G and P graph. And then let's consider a matrix, an ad adjacency matrix of this graph, a G and by N matrix with a i j equals one if and only if i is connected to j. Okay, this is a random matrix. It's a Hermitian and with the independent Bernoulli entry, Bernoulli p entries. Uh, there, uh, there, uh, there are two problems with it. The diagonal of AG is zero, because I didn't allow self-loops. And the expectations of the other entries are P and not zero. But if we know that we can handle matrices with perturbations of small rank and we can handle approximate eigenvectors, this is not a problem for us. I can write A as uh, A minus P uh, uh, No, let, let's write it as some A tilde plus, minus P times one and plus delta. Now what is what here? A tilde is the Hermitian matrix with A, I, G uh, independent Bernoulli P entries above the diagonal. Uh, P, uh, P is the probability, one is the matrix of all ones. And delta is the, di is the diagonal matrix which should take care of the fact that uh, the diagonal entries of A tilde are not zero and the norm of delta is one. So I uh, decomposed my matrix into the matrix of a manageable norm. This is, uh, sorry, Bernoulli, not, not Bernoulli P, but uh, I take shifted uh, centralized Bernoulli P. Which means that the expectation of A i j tilde is zero, and this is the term re responsible for the expectation. Okay, so what, we, uh, what do we have? The, uh, these entries are centered and bounded. For bounded centered enter, entries, the norm of A tilde cannot be too large. e to the power negative cn. So we are fine on this count. We don't, uh, this term would not bother us. And then there are perturbations. This is rank one, and this is small norm. So, uh, 
I can put this small norm into the error term and any eigenvector of the matrix A will be an approximate eigenvector of this matrix. The conclusion is that the, uh, the delocalization theorem applies to the adjacency matrix of the graph. So what can we do with it? Let's uh, first consider the question of nodal domains of a random graph. So what is a nodal domain? You have, say, a Dirichlet problem for the Laplacian. You calculate the uh, eigenfunctions, and then you ask how many uh, connected uh, components the positive set has. Let's consider the, a one-dimensional problem. So I have a string. The first eigenvector is just the sign. Lambda 2 will be a wave like this. Lambda 3 like this, etc. And then I, count, I consider the, compon uh, the connected components of the same size. So this is one connected component. This is another connected component. We have two for the second eigenvector. We have three for the third one, etc. And the same picture uh, can be seen on, in mul uh, multiple dimensions, for example, for the for Laplacian on compact ma manifolds without boundary. And there, if you increase the number of the eigenvalue, the number of the nodal domains increases. This is a classical study in analysis and uh, differential geometry uh, going back uh, to uh, current and even be, uh, beyond that. And uh, about 12 years ago, Nati Lineal proposed a program of studying nodal domains for random graphs. Of course, random graph is not a manifold, so we want to see whether there is a difference between the behavior of the nodal domains and the behavior of, uh, uh, for graphs and for the manifolds. And uh, he came up with a surprising answer that there is a huge difference. Actually, uh, Dekel, Lee, and Lineal proved that uh, the number of nodal domains for all non-first eigenvector, all eigenvectors of an Erdős-Renyi graph except the first one is bounded by a universal constant. Later, and uh, this is a result of 2008, Later, Aurora and Bascara showed that the number of uh, nodal domains is uh, actually two, exactly two, for all eigenvectors except the first one. The first, uh, because the uh, for the adjacency matrix of a random graph, the entries have non-zero expectation. The first uh, eigenvalue is uh, se uh, separated from the rest of the eigenvalues. The first eigenvalue is of order n. The rest is of order square root of n, 
or square root of np. Let me flash for a moment uh, the properties of the random graphs. We will talk about uh, them a bit later. And our aim is now to prove this Dekel linear Aurora Bhaskara theorem that the number of nodal domains is exactly two. Uh, to complement the picture, there was a more recent result of Tao and Wu showing that if you consider an eigenvector of an erdos schrodinger graph, then with high probability it has no zero coordinates, which means that these nodal domains may be uh, described as connected components of sets of strictly positive and strictly negative coordinates. Okay, so now let's see how to prove that the number of nodal domains is exactly two. Let's decompose. So, first of all, if we consider the first eigenvector, it has all positive coordinates. It can be written explicitly. And the other eigenvectors should be orthogonal to it, which means that they must have both positive and negative coordinates. So I must have at least one positive and one negative nodal domain. So let P be the largest positive. nodal domain and the same and will be the largest negative nodal domain and I'll decompose the set of vertices as the disjoint union of P and and the rest and our aim uh, to, is to show that the rest is empty, but we will start with a more moderate task. We will show that W is small. With probability. 1 minus O small of 1, and here you can put an explicit uh, term. The cardinality of W is less or equal than twice log, uh, no, C log squared N over P squared. And to simplify uh, the the argument I'll assume for a moment that P is constant. So how would we prove it? This is elementary and doesn't require any random matrix theory. Let's consider this set W and W is a disjoint union of nodal domains, say positive no nodal domains, a, one, it's okay. And negative nodal domains. And let's take a point, a vertex from each of these small positive nodal domains. These vertices cannot be connected because uh, this is P1, this is P2, P3. If I uh, take a vertex from each one, these are connected components, so that I cannot have uh, uh, an edge between two components, which means that if I pick a point, a uh, vertex from each no nodal domain PK, I get an independent set, a set of points which are not connected by edges. And this is an element, uh, probability 101 problem. We can prove that 
the cardinality of the independent set is log n over p at most. So this k capital and l capital are less than c log n over n. OK, now let's take, let's suppose that this is an unempty set and let's take one connected component from this set, one nodal domain. And I'll assume for a moment that I have a rather big additional nodal domain is greater or equal than uh, log n over p. But this nodal domain fell into W for a reason. It's not the largest one. And uh, this means that then the size of p is also greater or equal than log m over p. And we have two sets of large cardinality. By the same reason, they cannot be connected by edges. Otherwise, they would merge to the same connected component. So I have two large sets which are not connected by edges. And again, a probability 101 problem is that this is unlikely, which means that our assumption was wrong. Cardinality of which pk is bounded by, uh, sorry, log n over p. Cardinality of which uh, pk is bounded by log n over p. Number of these d domains is bounded also by log n over p. Combining it, we get log, n, log squared n over p squared. Great. So the exceptional set is small. And now let's prove the Dekel Li Lineal Aurora Mascara Theorem. Okay, I'll assume to the contrary that W is non empty, and I'll pick. Uh, vertex double, uh, uh, vertex say V in W, and I have an eigenvector X let X be eigenvector. And I'll assume that Say x w, x v, the coordinate corresponding to this vertex is negative. Very good. Now let's write the eigen. Uh, eigenvalue eigenvector equation. So a x is lambda x, and I'm going to read the fifth uh, row of this equation. So a uh, lambda x v is a x v is the entries of a are zeros or ones. 
So this is the sum of our all, say, u and gamma of b of x u, where gamma of v is the set of all vertices connected to the vertex v. Because only for connected vertices I get ones. And now let me estimate the L1 norm of x reduced to gamma of v. Not L2, but L1 norm. So this is the sum over u in gamma of v uh, x u. What is gamma of v? x v is negative, and v is from this exceptional set, which means that v cannot be connected to the maximal negative nodal domain. And so gamma of v is disjoint from the negative nodal domain. Oh, sorry, this is absolute values since I take uh, the, uh, the L1 norm. And by exclusion, we have u in gamma of v intersected with p x u plus some u in gamma of v intersected with w, x, absolute value of x, u. But if I consider the vertices from the positive nodal domain, the coordinates are positive. I don't need the absolute value here. And then let's complete this sum to the sum over all uh, over the whole set gamma of v. So this is less or equal than the sum over u in gamma of v x u plus, and I have to compensate of it for it. I compensate by at most adding the same sum, so sum over u in gamma of v intersected with w, x, absolute value of x u. And I know what this is by the eigenvalue equation. So this is less or equal than the absolute value of, double, 